do you have for us? Now, I didn't know if Nina might have told you. A little bit. Sometimes it's hard to sell a service if you don't know that you need it. <laughs> and uh, I was going to come over here to see Nita one day, and I was in the bank and she was there, so I kind of comfy boy did it. <laughs> I'll give you a copy of it. Sign, which makes it official. Your trees need some work. Uh, I had observed that, and the fact that uh, they were right downtown, I thought, well, you know, that'd be a pretty good advertisement. So I proceeded to look them over, decided I'd come and lay it to you. I might do like I did the lodge. They uh, said, no, our trees need work. I said, well, since we built this building, you have spent $75,000 on lawn care. I said, I'll take care of the trees for $50,000. <laughs> so I got their attention yeah. anyway, and I said, "Yeah, we do need some work done." So it's the same way. I mean, every day we see our grass grow trees. You never pay attention. And I don't know if you want to talk to the uh, K State has a forester that will come here, and uh, we talked to him, and he said the trouble started in the ice storm of '07. He said, "Then the trees, we all know what nature is." They tried to put on more limbs. They put on too many. Well, when they did that, then the drought came. So he said, really, where the ice belt was, all the trees were in, have been hurt in mm -hmm. bad shape. Yours are young enough. Most of the trees in town are 50 to 100 years old. These are young enough that you can go in there and trim them, clean them up, and still make something out of them. And he suggested, and I don't mind suggesting to you people, or the school or the whatever, need to come back in about three years, check them over. They won't need as much work, but they'll need some trip. And I said, well, that's hard for me to go to the owner and say, you know, you need to spend $1,000 on these trees, but I need to come back in three years and do it again. So in actuality, that's what really should be done. You can't get everything out. As he suggests, you go and you get all of the dead out. And those limbs that come out in terms of that. At one time, and I mentioned the figure myself, I said, we have trees that need 25% removed. He said, at one time, we, K-State, suggested 25%. But he said, we're down to 10 or 15. And that's when he said, you need to come back about the third year and check it out. Is there dead stuff in our trees? I don't see very much dead. There's a lot of crooked. I had hoped that maybe that uh, if Nita had mentioned the trees were the problem, she kind of said, what do the trees need? And uh, I thought that maybe, you know, that y'all would have a chance to look. There's a lot I, I of a little bit. There's a lot of crooked stuff in it comes out and turns down. There's too many limbs in there. And uh, it just needs to be shaped up, you know, they're just Front down, or limbs come out and turn down. There's just a lot of that excess that needs to be trimmed out. And I'd say back to the 10 or 15 percent. Once you go through it, if there is some dead and get that out, then probably only 10 or 15 percent would come out. It's always hard for me to tell until they leaf out and you can see them in the spring or summer before what you need to do. But you just like my wife. I tried to talk her. I had the ugliest trees, as ugly as anyone in town. And Trent and I tried to get her about as good last spring. I want to sit with the leaves. I said, I can see the limbs better without leaves than I can when the leaves come. So she's still waiting. We're going to get it done. She's still, she's still waiting. Yeah, our trees aren't very big around the courthouse, really. It doesn't look like it. No, they're not real big. They just need they just need to be cleaned up, trimmed out. And some of the lower branches need to be removed. They, and I understand that you know you need to open up the center of the tree, make it more healthy. Well, not so much as you know the peach tree. That's the main thing. You open up the middle, but it just all the way up. It needs some. It needs some work. So whether I'm expecting a decision right now or not, it doesn't make any difference. I don't want to bring it to your attention and the fact that we would like to do it, we're glad to do it. So. 
No, since it's a nice morning, maybe afternoon, we'll go out and look at it. Sounds like a work. <laughs> well, I'll leave you with your short meeting. Okay. okay. You need anything? All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. What's the phone number for you, Garland? Or who do I call if they decide to Oh, me. Okay. 793-0488. Okay. Yeah, the whole county went on the phone number. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's copper. Copper. Mm. And salvage. It's, it's not a good situation the way those, I don't know if that shows a real good picture of that hangar, but there's approximately half a dozen along that stretch. I don't know whether the insulation failed some time ago and we started to get condensation back down in underneath there or whether it's just the fact that it's very, very old. But we'll have to uh, do a little resupporting back in there. I think if I can get a couple guys in there, space is kind of limited. If I can get a couple guys in there, we can take some blocks, some 4x4s, four fours, cinder blocks, we can drag back in there and have two guys pick, pick up on that pipe because it, it comes in and you go in the little tunnel and you hit a corner and it kind of takes a 45 and then back around to a 90. From this point that you're looking at, approximately, I would say, 15 to 20 foot one direction and probably about 15 foot the other direction, the supports are gone. This whole thing is just hanging there. And it could have been something, maybe that fitting started seeping, waterlogged all that fiberglass along that whole thing. And next thing we know, the, the hangers just rusted off and it just it's supporting itself. But if I can get a couple guys underneath there, we pick it up and block it up. That'll give us the time to probably we we'll probably use half inch anchors. That's three eighths all thread, which is more than enough to support it if we get enough on it. Um, but we'll go right back into the concrete with lead anchors, and then we'll screw our all thread right into that, reclamp, re-support, and then the insulation company has to come in, and I'm going to let them assess how far back each direction they need to cut to be able to get a good seal. I'll probably have them go ahead and go as far as they can get to in the tunnel. Because if, if you go even 30 feet one direction and there's something that's happened to that insulation, that's going to let moisture get in there and it's going to follow the piping whichever way it slopes. And, you know, if that was the low spot, then you know exactly what happened. But they'll, they have mastic that they can go around existing um, cuts or tears or problems with the insulation and try to get this thing resealed to where, uh, where we don't have this continually happening. You know, it's everything runs downhill. And you start having condensation problems in your piping, it's a never ending battle. You know, it's you just be constantly going around re-supporting, re-applying mastic, you know, trying to reseal everything up. Those pumps push 150 gallon a minute at 90 foot of head, which means take a three inch pipe like that and put it 90 feet straight up in the air and you turn the pump on. At that outlet, you're getting 150 gallon a minute out of it. 
if something were to ever happen down there in one of those break, I, I don't know what those documents are back in that thing. I don't know whether they're something that, that, we, that, that we need to keep. You know, <laughs> we do have the phone system down there and the elevator electricity thing down there. You got your chiller, your boilers. Yeah. Uh, that one floor drain that's down there in the center, it doesn't have a chance. Like he told me, fill that place enough of water. Mm -hmm. so now these are the pipes for the heating and air conditioning. Correct. This is your hot and your chilled, yeah. chilled circulation service. Um, we can go down there, take a look. You can kind of see what I'm up against. Um, we won't go in a ton of but it Jay wants to. I see what I need to see. <laughs> That's, it's not the greatest picture, but where yeah, this is the basement. Um, well, let's take yeah, what we, let's take it. What we look so at. So we can explain to you about that pump and is and that. right in underneath here, where you see all of this corrosion. That's where the water is actually dripping, and this is just completely saturated for 30 feet both directions. Mm -hmm. That sand and mud is probably about mm -hmm. that deep right now. What we would have to do, as you can see, this is one support that's gone. This one, I don't know what it used to be on. Somebody once upon a time tried to maybe rewrap some insulation and didn't do a very good job. Was it right there, or why is that exposed? I, I couldn't tell you that. We There wasn't even a whole lot of insulation laying down here. But it looks... I can't tell you whether it's original because this is kind of an interesting little thing. That's somebody has drilled a hole in the bottom of that pipe once upon a time and they have tried to solder around that and it's it's kind of like a little drain which is kind of convenient, you know. I I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get maybe a 4 inch piece of 4 inch drain tile in there. If I were to open this to drain the water out, because what you're seeing, this branch goes over a little ways and it goes up through the floor and it feeds a series of fan core units right through the floor. And if we were to cut this to do our repair, I don't know how much water is sitting on top of me four floors up that's going to come back down and just wash us right out the end of the tunnel. So we got to be careful. It's you know we got to make sure we got as much water out of there as we can, and you know we got to go back and get into some good pipe over here and over here. You put two repair couplings on, and then you rebuild all the way up into here and re insulate. I'll probably I don't know if I can put another drain on or. You whether, think there's even a, whether there's even a point because maybe someone wanted some hot or cold water down the basement. <laughs> yeah, something. I, I don't look at all. I don't know what what that was in there for. Um, yeah, that's that's what we're up against on on that side of it. If, if you didn't have that drain there and you ever wanted to, to drain the system, I mean how you would drill a hole in it at that point in time, and instead of doing this soldering job, you would you would try to that copper is pretty heavy. Maybe tap it and thread it, and screw in a piece of brass, and then you know you could. Unfortunately, if you ever accidentally hit this or it got bumped, it's going to crack right there, and you're going to have a mess anyways. You wouldn't think you want to have such a long neck on it. No, it, it, you. If you wanted something on there, it needs to be yeah, close coupled be right, right up, up to, you know, to, have to be as strong as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. So, I did bring the proposal for that repair, and I did not make <coughs> enough copies, but I brought two. Um, that's everything included, and since we're going to drain the system, I highly recommend to put some corrosion inhibitor in this system. Mm -hmm. What it does, it'll scavenge all your oxygen out. We'll bleed as much as we can up high to get the actual air pockets out. But as you know, fresh water is rich in oxygen. 
it's got a ton of it in there. You fill this system, I, I'm thinking we're probably talking 25,000 gallons, maybe a little bit more by the time you fill this circulation system. If we don't add a good chemical to this that scavenges all that oxygen out, you will have nothing but pure oxidation in there. Your water in your circulation system will be, it'll look like tar. And that'll be, what that air does is it immediately attacks any steel. Any steel on your pumps, any flanges, any black pipe, it, it'll, it'll start going in, until it's neutralized. We'll add, it'll probably take at least five gallons of full concentration closed loop treatment to to do this. And you and you don't want to you don't want to buy any more chemicals than you have to. So you know the the repair we need to make sure it's mm -hmm. completely correct, done right, and finalized to where we don't have to open this system again for a while. So, we'll now look at it. Okay. Uh, do we have to recess to do that? Yeah, just recess. Okay, we're going to recess. We got very good pumps for us. So, if I've answered any questions, I hate being very bad news. I just came here to have a good day. <laughs> We were getting ready to throw that pump in, and then I said, uh oh. And TJ, doing maintenance the last two or three times, he's, he's told me, hey, have you ever had to add water to that system? I said, man, for the 10 years I've been doing maintenance on it, no, I've, I've never had an issue. Yes, we've always fought the pumps. It seems like every year one of those pumps was susceptible to getting, it was burn up wiring or something in the spring or, you know, do something crazy. And we got all that repaired on the last one. We put in a new motor starter. It burned up wiring inside the conduit. We pulled all new wire from point A to point B. And eventually, I just when I was down here to install the pump, I said, well, go crawl that tunnel. And they're like, <laughs> he's like, no, really, go. And it didn't take well. That was the last one they picked because it's the tightest and the hardest to get into. They went through the other two first. I said, go on the south one, and they came back muddier than muddy. <laughs> we found it. And I crawled back in there, and we measured everything out. And it's going to be a mess, but it's at least it's fixable. At least it didn't, when the hangers or whatever happened, it all gave out, didn't kink and break in half right there, and flood everything out in the basement. At least it's caught it. I wish we would have caught it when, you know, two maintenances ago when he said, hey, we're, I had to fill with water. I didn't think anything of it because it does happen once in a while. When we bleed air out of fan coil units, if, if we get a lot of water, we'll bleed at least once a year up at the highest level and you have to add water then because, you know, your air effectively disappears and you replace the air with a little bit of water. But he said it two maintenances in a row, six months, and he said he had to add it again. I said, that's not right. We've got to figure out what's going on. Is there a place to bleed off the air up, up mm -hmm. the top? We've modified fan coil units. We've drilled some bigger holes in it to where we can get screwdrivers in on some valves, and we can break them open, and that's what we'll have to do. While we're filling, I'll have to have a couple guys up at the highest point just monitoring the air and water and we more or less bring the system back, fill it from the bottom up. If you fill it too fast, then you get air trapped in the middle and even the pumps sometimes can't overcome it. If all these fan coil units, you know, I, I, I would hate to even guess how many miles upon miles of piping there is in this building. You get some of it full of air, bad news. It's very noisy. Yep. But that's that's what we would do. We would just have two people monitoring upstairs and we would fill as fast as we possibly can from the basement, of course. And we got some walkie-talkies that can communicate back and forth to where if all of a sudden, boom, they're getting 
water out of two of them, but it's odd how it happens, you know. This may all be air, but there may be water spraying all over the place upstairs. And got to shut down, let it <coughs> do its thing, let some of the air flip flop and get the water back down where it's supposed to be and start again. But so this includes the removal of the asbestos and yep. the reinsulation of it? Everything. Everything is turnkey deal on that. Well, I make a motion we accept this uh, bid from KVK for $15,975 to repair the heating and air conditioning of the courthouse. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept the bid from KVK for $15,975 to repair the heating and air conditioning of the courthouse. All in favor say aye. 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 Those no motion carried. Do I need to sign one of these? You want to sign one? Sign yeah, a copy? Yeah, if you, want, if you want to sign a copy, that's fine. And you'll probably do this during the changeover yeah. between heating and. Yeah, we'll do it plus the key. Now that, that is, that one is strictly for everything outside and then the tunnel work is, is separate yes, too. So we will we will have to do it to where we can keep everybody comfortable. You know, we need to get everything set in place and ready to go. And if we have to do it over an evening, if we have to wait until everything shuts down on Tuesday and we do it over an evening, you said if the weather's warm, that's what we'll do. We'll just we'll work all night. That way the next day the system's back up and in, in operation. Okay. And that's that's the only way we can go about it because if for some reason it was eighty five degrees, it's Nita can tell you that she's been through it. It's it's flat out hot. I know something on the timing, I'll get with Nita. She can stay in contact and we'll make it happen. All right. um, you may see <coughs> the remediation company. They may just, and depending on if I have myself or TJ, if one of us are out here, it will just be in and out because it won't take them much more than. Well, they'll have to do some taping, and they'll have to, you know, get their ventilation, their, their negative pressure hood, and all that stuff set up. But, uh, you know, effectively, two, three hours, so be in and out, no problems. Okay. Who takes the asbestos off your hands? They take it. They take it, sign off on it, and provide me with a certificate that says it was disposed of properly by state mandates, and everything is kosher and they keep it in the file and then you can look back any project that we've done they can pull KVK out and send us copies if we ever ever need I don't know for what but it never came up usually once it's gone out of sight out of mind no one worries about it anymore so thank you sir thank, thank you guys you. let me know if you need any other information and we'll make this as painless as possible. <laughs> All right. That's good. Have a good day. All right. Lisa, you got something? Huh? Yeah, have we done a burn there? Okay. <coughs> a lot of counties have. Of course, you don't have a pass through, but you see there, was a, there was a map the other night on the news that uh, showed you know, high fire danger. And uh, Stanford and Edwards and Kiowa and Pratt and Barber were not in in the area. So, and I think what we've done in the past is let you know, up to the discretion of the fire chief, which is mandated by the state fire marshal, fire fire marshal, which I think they get an alert every morning through the internet. 
So if the wind's over 15 miles an hour, you can't burn. Just have a burn ban in the city for the scabbard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need one then. Of course, of course, you don't have the you know, quarter sections and half sections no. pass through that. Well, you do if you I have the same area. Though. It's south of Mexico, you do. Yeah, do? yeah there's some there's miles and miles in San Diego. If you got it started through the creek, it'd go a long way. Yeah. And there's not there's very many places to shut it off. I've got some um, abatements to add to those there. Um, I just did them this morning. Staff of the city abated all the special assessments. So. Yeah, I usually don't get a signature on them, but I thought you're here, so I'll do it. But this is a copy of the minutes where staff of the city abated off, waived those special assessments. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the expense of so, mowing jobs. Right. So, That'll clean that up for you, which I'm glad the city did that. We got a new owner for it, somebody that wants to pay the taxes, and that's what we're after in the tax sale. So. Okay, the purpose of the tax sale is to put the property in the hands of somebody who will Take pay future that. taxes. I mean, yeah. a lot of times you have to write off old taxes, old right. assessments. So this will make him very pleased. So he, he went to the city council. And and then they decided to waive off those fees. So, and then I have my quarterly from December, a little late, better late than never. So, our ending balance on the second sheet there, fourteen million six hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. It shows the. the Got my pie graph, I think it's right. <laughs> That's our breakdown of our CDs and our liquid accounts. As you can see, we're pretty liquid. I'm not, still not very excited about really pursuing CDs too much because they're just not paying them. Not better either. No. And then here's my interest chart over the years. For 2013, we only made $16,800 in interest. Look back to year 2007, I made $275,000 in interest that year. Yeah. Thank Lehman Brothers for that. That's like, that's like five mils. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now you want to look at this two ways. You're going to borrow them. Well, I know. We're not borrowing. No, I know. <laughs> I'm saying. But it, it just goes, show, it goes to show how <laughs> investment interest earnings really is crucial in county business. Oh, huge. Because it can save a few mills. So. Yeah. Um, that's, that's all I got for you. I'll probably have the next quarter for you in a few weeks. So <laughs> 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 Do you have any questions? Okay. Lisa, when you get a chance, are you going to get me a list of the three-year tax delinquent real estate? Three-year? Yeah. What three happened year of redemptions? Okay. What happened the last year? Did they all clean them up or just open a few? We got a lot of people come in and pay after I sent yeah. the so-called nasty gram. Surprised the heck out of me. Even that Vietnamese or Chinese guy who mm -hmm. owned the school came and paid yes, a big chunk did. of change. How much did he pay? Like 20,000? 25,000. Oh, 25, 25, 25, okay, I, I, I just hope the guy had some type of insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Why would you? Unless you just got insurance. The, sad, the sad thing is, is that the guy who owns it. The sad thing is, it's going to cost the city of Stafford a good chunk of change to demolish that. Yeah, thing. Back yeah but want to be on the guy that owns it? They can try and recoup from him. But then that's what they do, they don't pay the tax. That's what they did over in Maxville on what was it, the old grocery store or something else. Yeah. I'm like, what property in Maxville has, you know, forty thousand yeah. dollars in back taxes against it? Yeah. You know, yeah. driving it's around it's a vacant yeah. lot. I'm going to leave the story here. Something that could force that guy to have to clean that up. I mean he owns owns a property. Well here here's the biggest problem. So many people were quote using unquote that building. I'm, you know, I'm not that familiar with the building, but apparently there was any, anybody who's at least been athletic could get in there. So 
Because that's where you had those guys keeping the stolen bicycles. The bicycle chop shop. Yeah. yeah. So you have a whole lot of potential you know, people to interview. Let's put it that way. I think last year there was just one person that didn't quite get them all, but he worked on them. Yeah. Well, I, I, re I remember you yeah, said, you know, such, such very good friends of mine. I remember when Don Paulson came in to pay the taxes on the Crankenburg property. <laughs> okay. Hey, I mean, you know, we're not, we don't turn away tax money. Right. No. I heard they had an estimate of ninety thousand dollars to clean up the Stafford School. Oh, that wow. would not surprise me. It'll take a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's not going to cheapen it by burning it down. See, see, one thing against random is the expenses. Once upon a time, yeah. you pretty much you can't find it. haul everything off to your local county dump, but that ceased about, what, 15, 20 years ago. They really started cracking down on you know, what you could put in. And uh, uh, right now, in the town of Ellsworth, they got a problem with two or three abandoned mobile homes between the railroad tracks and the river, really prime real estate. But those things are uh, insulated with asbestos, and nobody will haul them off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was asking this guy, what do you do with your asbestos? I mean, that stuff is, is, is just, you know. He says this is the last of Radioactive. And uh, yeah, it's not very bad, which surprised me. The old Ellsworth Hospital, which has been vacant now for about 25 years, is of course full of asbestos. Uh, and hence it sits empty. You, know, you go past it on Route 56. It's mm -hmm. right there by the golf course on the overpass. That's your classic white elephant. Uh, the, of course, that's the city's problem. You speak of this mm -hmm. county council. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in the city, it's their problem. But no asbestos. I'm not sure what you do when you got a decaying structure that's loaded with asbestos. Huh? Thanks. Yeah. So did you forget any there? We have already done. What? Nice tax from correction. There's one for every year, but other than that. They may not have any specials to come out. Yeah. Oh, they didn't. It's just on the years they had no charges or whatever the charges are. Let me get a motion to accept these tax rule corrections. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. 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 Meeting all the time. Say, I, I, I. He's the guy who's teaching everybody else how to steal the custody. Um, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I, I, I need to bring this up. The issue of the remote, remote, not control, remote access to the. Remember when we talked about that to the jails for the first appearances? Yes. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. I thought Randy was going to be here, but since I know you're in a hurry, I'll go ahead. Um, Randy and Jeff went to Greensburg last week and talked, met with the sheriff and looked everything over. And um, this would be a go, but we have never officially approved. I thought we did. Mm -hmm. I looked back in the minutes, and we talked about it in two sessions, but nothing was ever. Well, that's so that's going to come up with a price. He did. Well, I have a price for the equipment, which is one thousand seven hundred sixty-four dollars and eighty-eight cents. Yeah, because I thought it was eighteen hundred ninety dollars, and we approved that. No. But there will be labor to run the Ethernet line to the courtroom or to the judge's chamber, wherever she wants it. And then there will be a mega meeting account charge. Um, I think this is a monthly charge. And Randy didn't know if it, it could be somewhere between 50 and $100. But the actual equipment, which is what we need, if you want to go ahead and do this, we need approval to do this equipment so he can get it ordered. And how much is it? $1,764.88. And that's for all of the... For the... Just for Kiowa County. Two cameras, some kind of access right. point, and two laptops. Because Pratt County was working on theirs. And this County's is for Kiowa there. County. The remote control access thing. Remote control. It's going to be for here. And, to and Kiowa County. And Kiowa County. To Kiowa County. Plus Barton County's already got their own equipment. And Pratt's working on yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Senator. But 
As I understand this, it, the other laptop will go to Kiowa County, right? Yeah. One laptop there for the one closer. Here. Right. Right. And one camera down there and one here. That's coming out of the sheriff's. Um, we can take it out of County General. We've got money there. So. I make a motion to allow uh, $1,764.88 for remote access, uh, first appearance uh, interviews for the court with Kyle <laughs> County. <laughs> I'll say it in the motion. <laughs> I'm going to let Eric Kirk repeat it. I'm not going to repeat it like that. <laughs> Okay, I'm thinking other things when I was a motion second. and a second to uh, for, for purchase the computer and cameras for Kyle County and Stafford County for first appearances for $1,764.88. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Now, do we need a motion on the, the monthly fee? Or um, since it's less than $100? It's less than $100, and as will the labor to run the Ethernet, I know. I mean, you just do it on consensus. I'll just do it. Well, wow. That's okay. <laughs> if you wanted an actual fixed price, we can probably get you one. It's going to be that one. We need to have it to make the deal work anyway. Right, yeah. Exactly, you've got to have it. So you, we just needed to get approval so we could either let that go. Next week, you've got two, the two public hearings. Um, are you going to be here? Because we're having some issues with one. Okay, what day On is this? Ohio and St. John County, next Wednesday. 26th. Yeah, sure I'll be here. Because. Um, I'll probably be here all, is that our it's township the, day? The yeah, last. Yes. I got the entire um, day blocked off to be here. We've heard from the St. John Township closing, so okay. there'll probably be people here. Well, said, basically, we need to have Phil Lusser here because, you know. This is his baby. Yeah. I'm kind of like the messenger, don't shoot me. No, that's, that's what I told him. No. I just sent this to What? What is the hearing for? Is it for closing the road? Yes, or? Phil wants these two strips of the road to be closed. Not just closing the bridge or making a minimum he, maintenance. He, it's he to close the road. The road closed so that title would revert. To the neighboring land, land the land. In other owners. words, they would pick up some additional real estate. I'm not sure how valuable it is. It's um, right down the middle. It's right there. Well, I'm assuming the road is centered on, you know, a section line. Where's the one in Ohio? I it's the one line. from um, Rickson's, from Turner's over to Rickson's old place. It goes past that junkyard, is that what you're talking about? Uh, the the one down one? here? Yeah, it goes past this old junkyard. I junk think era. it's just past Larry Turner's corner, it, it isn't is. it? I've talked to Turner and Rickson, and Turner doesn't have any problem with it. I don't think that'd be the only two people really involved mm -hmm. except for yeah. kids yeah. partying. Uh -huh. I mean, there wouldn't be anybody else have any Don desire Fisher to Don Fisher was one of the landowners. Don Fisher Trust has some land along there, and then you came Rickson. But the traffic that goes by there would be going right by Turner's house. Yeah. And if anybody would have a complaint, it would be Larry. So I, I checked with Larry and he said that it would be a good idea to close it. So. We had a good wreck down there, shoot, oh, like yeah. two years after I took office. I remember driving down there, I always like to kind of get a feel. And these kids must have been doing something to Carl because. That was a big, big metal like cattle guard that they hit. I mean, it was big. Cattle guard won. <laughs> that that one that in St. John Township. The problem is, is that that road and the bridge that crosses the Rattlesnake Creek provides access mm -hmm. to at least four different pastures. Mm -hmm. That if the creek is high, that is the only way to get in there. So what I'm thinking we need to do to make people happy and to give them access, which we want to do, is to have an agreement for the county maybe to maintain just the bridge part of it, if it would at least the labor in order. Because it's already in maintenance right now. Yes. Okay. It's well, not great because that road has never been graded for 10 years probably. So the township has not done anything with it, but that bridge does need to be there. 
Well, like I say, just make sure we have Phil here because otherwise there will be a lot of unanswered questions. Okay, now. I couldn't even find that room you're talking say about. I went down it the other day. And it's it's a, just a two track, it only looked like a road. It's an adventure, but we can say that, that these are approved. Is there another resolution then we publish? Or? Yeah, we have the work order of closing road. Okay. Okay. That road okay. 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 Uh, just a mile uh, off uh, to the exactly I don't expect too many complaints yeah, about they've the one down here. Ohio County. It's it the bridge is in Jerry's. Well maybe we you know we'll get Phil here. I'll be here at eight thirty. Yeah, the first one at nine is the St. John's at nine. Can we do a contract thing on that bridge like that? Yeah. Wards is right around there too. My herders, that to be the only access for them too. I mean, there needs to be access for them. And if you look at the fence, the fence is not in the right spot. That bridge will look up. Well, actually, the bridge itself will become half Jerry's and half uh, Dan Bliss's. That's where the, line, that, the property line is right where the bridge is at. Even though that's not where the fence is at, and they don't have any problem with where the fence is at now, but that bridge would become two owners. So they're probably, in my, my way of thinking, I'm not an attorney, but my way of thinking, there not, probably needs to be an agreement between the county and the owners, and then they're probably, I would think that the owners ought to have an agreement amongst themselves that they would provide access to their neighbors on their own. We don't need to worry about that, but I would think that would be the way I'd want to handle that. It's for if not this generation, the next generation. Do you have anything fire department wide? Burn bans? They talked about burn bans earlier. Do you have any? We did I we didn't have any burning this week. I I guess for cousin of wings and anything else. I just told dispatch off don't have any burns. I mean, not as a burn ban, just because mm -hmm. of the yeah. condition. Okay. Look at these. It's being it keeps on getting more dry. It's going to be a long time. We don't want to have to catch it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I want to say that. Nobody has heard anything from the Stafford deal. I can't believe yeah. for a phone call from you. No. It's <laughs> kind of like the bench area there. Who's the fire marshal for this part of the state? It changed. He's on. I'm not sure which one should be. That's it. Oh, I, think I understand why I did it. Hmm. You said the one that the Lord used to do it. Well, just like E10. Yeah, yeah, but I know they changed, changed so off the circle, but that's, that's the last one. That's for February. Yeah. Time yeah. Time we'll have one for March. No, it was what it worked. We'll put a note on there. Oh, you think it's I'd like to have a pick up for the voucher? Yeah, because um, here's why. One, this company keeps them itemized. I know. Okay. This one, though. I'll pull both of those. Just oh, pull some. Oh, and there's a few two here, Here's another question, Nita. What is the annual mining course? Do we got a mining course? The guys course? have to take a mining course yeah. every year because of the, the sand pit out here. Oh, so okay. Philip pulls them all in and they have it all at once. Okay. It lasts a whole day. Oh, okay. They don't like it much. I was, I was kind of curious if you guys had Yeah, a, it's required. Yeah. Are they, they have mining? Yeah. 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 They, 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 they got caught last year. Someone from Osher Dream Bites against a mining and it wasn't posted correctly. Well, and they only run the thing, what, twice? Six or seven days out of the year. Out of the year. Because I have, sitting in my office, uh, a couple of salt crystals from about 1,200 feet down. Yeah, yeah. And they're really cool. Well, one's got a lot of red in it, it's about the size of, you know, your two fists. One's got a lot of red in it, the other's beautiful bluish purple, and I'm sure it's got some other minerals in it to give it that cast. But a friend brought it up in the mine. Yeah. I could go to sandstone. Yeah, you know, it, 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 there's two there's two shafts. There's the, the uh, independent salt shaft and the crystal shaft. I'm not sure which one came out of, but both of those suckers go down about 1,200 feet. Right. Yeah. 
So the one at Hutch was at 600. Of course, they got around like how many hundreds of feet above and below. Yeah, see, they don't see nothing. Look at the hill. I know. That's behind the detail. Oh. You'll find very. There's nothing there. I know. So the center video holes are mine. Well, they're not the same thing. They don't say what they took. So this company says yeah, it's, 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 it's very detailed of what they, who they took. Yeah. The main From and where. And this is just <laughs> for the month of March. That's ours. Probably ours still the property that was all recovered. Took the boat tow trucks and the goods trucks to haul it again. So I don't know if it's in the closet. Well, I mean, there's no they, detail they on the bill. It's just for the month. What? For the yeah. month, here's your bill. Yeah, but, yeah it's just for the month. Oh, for one month. <laughs> yeah, because normally they will say when it's a. Uh, I'm sure he can do it if so we would ask yeah. him. It just. Well, if we don't have it, we'll pay. Yeah. Can you pull that check? Can you pull that check? Oh, I would, I would just, well, from this point, point, this point forward, we need a little more detail than here's your bill for the map. <laughs> that it's so many hours and... Because it starts at you Well, I mean, kind of like that. At least yeah. we can, you know, it's a, it's a little more cut and dry than... What it is, the vehicle, or yeah. kind of gives you something. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you... Just say I told something. I would assume that bill gets passed on as far as... That is small, probably. We're trying to figure out how to handle it. That's one of the good things. Joe, that when he gets out. That's on this old property that we're trying to see. Yeah, because next month we won't have the tenants fees, right? Or the home You'll have March. We'll still have the tenants. Yeah, we'll still have the tipping fee, but then we'll, we'll bill on that back out, aren't we? Starting April 1. Yeah. Also, yesterday, Carolyn moves in to peak for the hearing on the Port Authority, and the committee will vote on it tomorrow. Okay. What happened to the mortgage fee? Yeah, they they go. got amended it again, and they didn't vote on it. Okay. But the amendment looked like it was to our detriment. They actually lowered the per page fees a dollar on all of them, so it didn't look she teaches the even class. Well, I know she teaches it, but is that? It's cheaper than what it has been. Uh, I think it's based on our student. Uh, last year we paid like $5,000 mm -hmm. or something. And we get that reimbursed back from us. Do you have anything else? <laughs> okay, we'll adjourn. <laughs>